Hello and welcome back and today of course as the title would suggest a bit weird if you didn't know already but today I want to talk about the E10 M20 that's right it's only gone and been bloody confirmed the device is here it's a device that we talked about around about a year ago and it is a PCIe upgrade for your Synology NAS system of course you're going to need a NAS with a PCIe slot to upgrade with but when we first started talking about this nigh on a year ago over in uh, Taipei at the Synology Solution Exhibition in their headquarters we didn't really understand fully what we got hold of there when we first talked about it of course it was a big deal the idea that Synology were working on an upgrade card that allowed you to have more than just SSD caching or 10 GBE. This is a combination card that gives you both, but it gives you both that although they're not the first people to produce a card like this, this is the first time that this card is done in such a way as it's removed a lot of the potential limitations. What does that mean in real terms? Well, up until now, Synology have had 10 GBE and NVMe SSD upgrade cards already, the latest of which from Synology. Have a look, have we got the card there? Now we haven't the um, 10 GBE card from then, could it was available in one port or two port, and it was available in copper or fiber. There, and this card using the Aquantia chipset was a, a allowed you to access 10 gigabit ethernet speeds between a connected 10 GBE network or a connected 10 GBE computer but ultimately with the NAS at 10 times that of 1 GBE. Great stuff. The NVMe SSD cache portion of events, that gave you the ability to utilize up to two SSDs in read-only or read and write cache to vastly improve your internal speeds that generally are bottlenecked by traditional hard drives. Again, goody, great stuff. But a number of you who were utilizing a number of the more modern generation of uh, PCIe enabled NASes, particularly ones that bought the 18 and 19 and 20 series ones that had PCIe uh, Gen 3 on them, found that having to choose between NVMe SSD cache or 10 GBE was a bit of a tough choice because one ultimately improved your internal speeds and the other improved your external speeds. And as though, although you might be able to prioritize one over the other, you didn't like the idea of choosing. And Synology listened and they worked together on this card, the E10M20Ti. Now, it is only available in a one port version currently and at the moment i don't know if there are plans to extend this logic or they're going to look at how this device lands and go from there but it is now available to buy it's available at retailers it's available on their website and it's taken just shy of a year but it is here and what do we know well first and foremost this device utilizes the latest generation of NVMe capacity. Now that's important because we're not talking about like Gen 4 here. We are talking about NVMe's at 22110 key. That is the much longer length SSDs. Now there's no like coincidence here that this is also being announced and released at the same time as Synology's own range of SSDs that we talked about here on the channel a short while ago. Some of which are going to be in 22110 length key uh, NVMe SSD boards, but this device will support up to two of those simultaneously. On top of that, the 10 GBE port available in copper will share the same bandwidth as the NVMe. But for those that are concerned about it, because we have seen versions of a card like this from companies like QNAP, this card arrives at PCIe Gen 3 times 8 That means that it really opens up the bandwidth. You will have to make sure that you have a PCIe slot that can take advantage of that. And even if you do, because even if you don't, I should say, backwards compatibility will still allow you to utilize it. But bear in mind that the true available bandwidth um, that you that you have to a card like this is going to be based more on the port on your system than on the card. But bear in mind that 10 GPE needs at least a thousand megabytes per second throughput and the NVMe SSDs, at that connection, you're probably going to get some of the 3,000, maybe early 4,000 megabytes per second NVMe's, you know, your 3,800 meg SSDs available on this device. That means that the throughput of that PCIe is more than sufficient if you have PCIe Gen 3 times 8 And that's largely why Synology are gearing towards those devices. If you look through the compatibility list for this card, you'll notice they generally only start at the 18 series. You know, your 
uh, uh, the kind of rack station, the 2418, and some of the other generation 18 PCI equipped boxes, as well as your 18, 19 plus, that sort of thing, and some of your newer generation 20 plus series like the 18, uh, sorry, the 820 plus. And uh, we're still hearing quietness about the 1220. Uh, plus we're not too sure about that one that might be pushed into the next gen with a bit of an overhaul but this card available uh, arrives with a five-year manufacturer's warranty which is great to hear and as soon as course of course as we have one we will be bench testing it on several systems as well as checking the performance and how it compares with nvme ssd caching on some of the systems that arrive with ports on board such as the 1019 plus and the 920 which of course use a Solaire on so it's going to be interesting to see what difference that makes but the fact that it supports up to those larger NVMEs is probably one of the most interesting takes for this card because having a card that can support these larger NVMEs although only as caching not raw storage which I know is a bit of a pain for you guys um it does allow a huge amount of flexibility and future proofing of upgrading your SSDs as you go. As mentioned, Synology is moving a lot of their resources into their own range of SSDs. They've already got their own range of upgrade cards in 10GBE, their own range of uh, memory modules. So it's not surprising that they want to move into that storage area, although I think we're a very long way from a Synology hard drive yet. Uh, having their own SSDs, they've got their own range of NVMe and SATA SSDs, and those NVMe's are also going to be 22110 as well. As well as that, of course, this will support the smaller, um, earlier generations of capacity and size of NVMe and this card will be available to be installed in the newer generations as you go forward. So I'll be interested to see how this logic carries on because the M2D20 uh, actually supports those larger gen NVMEs as well. So I don't know whether releasing these cards in such close proximity is a bit strange why you're releasing them at the same time. It's a bit odd because anyone that buys the M2D doesn't think they need 10 GBE. I think for the price difference between them, I would still go ahead and get it anyway. But needless to say, this is a very interesting card and it's one that we've had a lot of questions about in the year since we first spoke about it. The only other thing I would say in terms of the negative uh, isn't really for me, but there's a few of you out there that may have wanted to see this device arriving with fiber connections rather than copper. It's understandable because copper is, of course, a far more business-led and long-distance connection. And also, of course, the fact that it is one port. But I think a lot of that comes down to the bandwidth and what you need to provision for, both in terms of the external connectivity and the internal SSD caching. One last question, of course, a lot of you do wonder when you see stuff like this is when will Synology ever jump on to the idea of these NVMEs being used for raw storage? And unfortunately, I think the answer is never. Uh, with DSM-7 just around the corner, we're seeing improved algorithms of taking advantage of SSD and SSD caching. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing even more of, them, of that later this year when DSM-7 finally reaches us, as well as their own launch events in the closing stages of 2020. But I hope you guys are as excited about this card as I am. Moreover, to the fact that it's actually real. We're all starting to think it was vaporware, and which it isn't. If you do want to learn more, there is a NASCAR pair article in the description, along with a link to span.com that details lots of stuff about this card what you need to know and where to get it and of course if you've enjoyed this click like if you want to learn more click subscribe and i will see you next time